professor of uh, Southwest, but you know where you are. And um, I want to bring on Harmony Corinne, who is just uh, uh, kind of bow down to his. So I'm going to introduce the cast right now. Uh, first up, we have James Franco. sites and co-ed pornography <laughs> and I was using them for like paintings and artwork and stuff and then I started looking at it and I just liked the world and the colors and like the uh, the feel of it and there was all these kind of hyper sexualized hyper violent kind of subjects but then there's all these kind of interesting childlike um, uh, details like you know like nail polish and bags and stuff like that so I just um, imagine like girls on a beach in bikinis robbing like fat tourists. That was like the first. And then from there I thought it was funny and then from there I just started to build the image and dream the story. And then when you brought when you brought this particular cast together, it kind of like uh, you're laughing because yes. <laughs> Alright. Okay, well and then kind of like in terms of how it how it unfolded in terms of yeah. found its uh oh how did I I cast I don't well I had been talking to James for like a couple of years before that. Oh, and then, like, I, had, I didn't, never had a character part, and then I started thinking about this alien character. And then, before I wrote it, what I did say I never do, is I just send him, like, lists of the ideas. Like, I usually wait till it's fully realized, and then, but I just wanted to know if he was going to, could do something like this. And it was just a kind of, uh, it's like an email, it's just like a hundred sequences and descriptions of things. And then within, like, two minutes, he, like, wrote me back and he was like, let's do it. And then that's kind of how Alien was born. <laughs> and then the, uh, the, 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 the other actresses in the film, for all different reasons, but just because they were um, like terrific and, uh, and bold and like also, in a lot of ways, in real life, representative of this kind of pop mythology and this, this thing and this connection. But these, they were all at a point in their lives where they were like ready to uh, experiment and to um, push themselves and uh, Lucky for me, they did. <laughs> We'd love to hear from him directly because it's you know it's just yeah. a great uh, expansion for all of you, exploration, fantastic characters. So, um, how much was fun, fun, or just all work? <laughs> no, it was really fun. I mean, being with the <laughs> being with these girls, um, you know, it it didn't feel like work, and you know, working with Harmony and James, it was it was such a great experience, and we had the best time. <laughs> um, I think the dynamic between the four girls is one of the most important elements of the film. So it, or very early on, Harmony knew that it was important that we became friends. So there was actually scheduled time for us to hang out. Um, so a lot of the film, the duration, we were hanging out and we did become friends. And, I think you can see that on screen. What was it like? Or what was it fun? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one reason, you know, I uh, 
uh, been a fan of Harmony since I was in high school. That's when kids came out, and um, I wasn't active professionally then, but it had a huge impact on me. I was, you know, I was interested in the arts, and here was something that was new. It was about people my age, but it was not, you know, pandering. It was um, aesthetically fresh, but also very real in, in a lot of ways. And um, so. From that moment on, I, you know, I was a, a, a fan. So when we finally worked together, I don't know how many years later, uh, I felt like I knew him. I think I even said on camp, on, on on set, like I feel like we went to camp together or something. And uh, one of the great things was that I got to play this character. And what Harmony does is he, you know, it's I'm so proud of the character. But I don't think it would work in any other person's movie. So Harmony makes a movie that can support that character, and that's why I could kind of go so crazy. It's because it, there was no way to go over the top. It was always going to be supported by Harmony and his movie and the context. And so, to have that as an actor is, you know, a, a dream. And you can just, you know, really feel like there's no boundaries and just create. That's great. Yeah, we have questions from the audience. Yes. I really like the scene where you're showing all of your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> My weapon of choice? Nunchuck. Nunchuck. I don't know. I don't know. It's Kool Aid. <laughs> Kool Aid and nunchucks. Yeah. Is it? A good mix. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't hear her up there. She's a big fan. <laughs> about research and what it felt like to have a grill. Um, well, the other thing about Harmony is uh, he is a great researcher. He's a, he, like he was talking about, you know, um, researching images of spring break on the internet. Uh, when it got down to my character, he started, you know, doing a lot of research on, on that. And we had a year from when we started talking about it to when we shot it. So there was a year worth of stuff that he sent me and Harmony knows all the weirdest websites and all the <laughs> strangest stuff and um, I got it all and you know sometimes there'd be interviews sometimes it'd be songs sometimes it'd be for how a person sounded sometimes how they looked and they all went into this soup for a year and um, <clears throat> and then the second phase of that was when he picked the location St. Petersburg Florida he went down there early to find locations, but also meet locals. And he's great at finding, just like he's great at finding the weird websites, he's great at finding the weird records and locals. So uh, he sent me some uh, camera phone uh, uh, videos of this weird guy with the dreadlocks, white guy with dreadlocks in a car, like rapping. Like I couldn't even understand what he was saying, really. He's like, oh, Franco, blah, 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 <laughs> check it out. And then, uh, <laughs> and Harmony's like, listen to this, this is, a, this is a model for your character. And, and he's in the movie, his name's Dangerous. Uh, he's kind of rapping with me on stage. He's supposed to make it out today, but I, my guess is he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's like a little speech that I have in there about like, check it out, I'm on YouTube, and all that stuff. That's straight from Dangerous. That's like stuff that he told me. And so, in some ways, um, the backstory of the character is based on, on him. And so, all that went into the mix, and uh, the grills were cool. I, the grills were cool, I hated the cornrows. They, if anybody's had cornrows, you're in the club, and you 
we you know get together and say, oh, the itch, uh, it's horrible. And then, but, uh, the grills were cool, and we went to that pool hall. There were all these people with like grills cemented in their to their teeth, and they asked me like, oh, yo, where'd you get yours? And uh, Gucci I, Man actually has two grills, like a grill on top of his grill. <laughs> I didn't tell them I were fake, they weren't cemented in anyway. Yeah. Over, got a hand up over there for his shirt. I think yeah, you It's not ba I mean it's not based on any character or any person. It's based on like kids that I knew they're growing up, like riding the bus to school with and stuff. Uh, and it's it's like an amalgamation of a lot of different people, all different uh, it's kind of been, been filtered in, into this creation, but it wasn't even meant to be like just a kind of white rapper. It was also, there was other kind of dimension to the character that we're trying to get at. Some kind of like gangster mystic. <laughs> yes, go out on the balcony. Yeah. The question was, this was very bold for the, for the women, and what were some of your reservations? To be honest, I didn't really have too many reservations. I um, I had been a part of something for a while that I was super blessed to be a part of, and I wanted to do something that would be different for me. I think I could speak for the girls when I say we really wanted to push ourselves, and we trusted Harmony to do that, and James was super supportive through the process as well. I think it was just something that we were all very proud of and wanted to do. She said, she said, exactly, um, Harmony made sure that we were comfortable, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> She's got problems. Uh, just wave it over there. <laughs> Of shots that I, uh, there was a couple of sequences. There was, sequ there was one sequence that I, we tried to use that I couldn't, where the girls robbed this kind of really chubby surfer, and like, uh, and they make him drop his pants and he has a huge penis, and uh, and he gets aroused and like they talk about it and stuff. It's a, it was kind of a beautiful scene, <laughs> and I mean, there's something really ro almost romantic about the scene. And then, uh, but it was one of those things, it was so intense, it was almost like another movie, and I couldn't get back, I kept trying it, it, it all over in the film, and I just couldn't never get back into the film. So, uh, anyway, that's, that'll exist on its own, I guess. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, um, the party footage was just all stuff we created. There was no stock footage, I just made those parties, and like, kind of like, we would kind of take over abandoned hotels and stuff, and get a couple of thousand kids in and they would just demolish the place. Uh, really demolish it. Now you should kind of go, and if you're going to go, but for everybody else, we'll take one more question. 
<laughs> what would happen in the sequel? I want some suggestions. Why well, would start with that scene you just talked about? They just start with a beautiful for that. Yeah. What? Christmas break. <laughs> All like winter coats and stuff. <laughs> that would be unsexy. <laughs> what else? What are some other suggestions? What? What? What are some other suggestions? Come on. HBO Summer Breakers. All right. That's not that great. <laughs> Spring break, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're here, so if you guys have questions. The, I'm curious, the word, what's the word like period? You have a what? But there's the word period. 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 Do you know what the word means? Uh-uh. That's what I said. I read a book in like 15 years. No, no, no. What did you say? Important. Well, no. Girls in bikinis with machine guns. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a, I I actually don't know how to explain myself, but when I was watching it, it's not just sexy, it's um, a fact in record. Do you know the word, James? Yeah. (laughs) No, but it's just, it's It's a. It's like a quiz show. Yeah. Well, it has to do with, you know, I mean, the, the movie is so complex, but they're, 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 it has to do with arousal. It has to do with making things for arousal. So, yeah. <laughs> Frisky. Uh, I just found out how to figure it in. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be okay. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Gucci Man is like one of my favorites. Uh, it, I first spoke to him in prison, and uh, like uh, his manager, Coach K, introduced us, and uh, I, uh, I told him stay out of, stay out of jail, and uh, I have a part for you. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I just always loved his his music, and loved like him and the way just his whole thing. There's something very special about him as well. Like there's, he's just he's like he's amazing. Gucci's like the real deal. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, the preacher, is a wrestler, WWF. I like wrestling. <laughs> and also, like, I, I grew up in Nashville, so all the pre like like youth preachers always live oh, like steroids and like uh, Red Bull and stuff. So, not that that's Jeff Jarrett, but I would like that. You got this woman on the balcony standing up. I don't know, I hope she'll love it. <laughs> Alright, you're on the, uh, the blue one, yeah. <laughs> the question is, what's it like to be so famous? <laughs> that was the question? Well, actually, it was, it was a little more nuanced, but yes. <laughs> was that the question? Young woman of color, in particular. Good, I'm glad I could be a woman of color. <laughs> no, I, I mean, honestly, I, I definitely agree with what Harmony was saying, and I think that the girls and myself, we could definitely speak to a certain generation, which is the obvious thing that people immediately associate ourselves in. But I think, like I said before, it was it's kind of an awkward thing to, to, to mess with, the transition of doing what I used to do into wanting to do things like, like this. So I, um, I guess I think for me it's, it's a little awkward, but I think I'm enjoying it and I'm trying to, to do the best I can. Sorry I'm nervous, I'm from Texas, so I'm just like... <laughs> Hey, you're a young woman of color. <laughs> What's it like? This has been a real thrill for us. Um, uh, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.